Okay. Here we got A flat 13, the next chord in our 2-5-1 in D flat, bridge of blue bossa. If you notice, this A flat 7 sound has a 13th on it, and I wanted to explore this 13th um, because it gives us a chance to explore a dominant chord that does not have altered notes like the sharper flat 9, sharper flat 5, flat, thir uh, flat 13, or sharp 11, any of those weird notes. This doesn't have any of those. And so it gives us a more simple diatonic jazzy sound. And the arpeggio, all good. Let's add that ninth to get that signature jazz. Let's put a little slide into it. chromatic to go down to the root of the arpeggio. Let's fill that arpeggio in. The first time I filled it in, I used a D flat because it sounded good to me. The second time I filled it in, I used a D natural because it sounded a little good to me. Both are options. One is a D flat, a natural 11. One is a D natural, a sharp 11. And they're both, both choices for us. Typically, when you're resolving a dominant chord to a major chord, we tend to hear and use an unaltered dominant chord. That doesn't mean you can't alter it. It sounds great if you alter it. But we're trying to get familiar with the more typical sounds, and later we can start experimenting even more and more. So let's take this arpeggio, and let's change it up a little bit. One, three, five, seven, nine, five, thirteen. Give us a nice sound like that. And that's one, three, five, seven, nine, three. Kind of cool. We put a slide in there. A little chromatic. One of the things you'll notice is playing these arpeggios eventually becomes a kind of jamming on the chord, choosing the notes that you like. And eventually you'll start falling into patterns that you dig sound good to you, that work for you, and are the basis of your own style.